Hallelujah. Now, the last time I was before you, just a few weeks ago, we visited the account of the children of Israel leaving Egypt, right? They left Egypt, and then they came across the Red Sea with Pharaoh in pursuit behind them. From their perspective, it looked as though there was no way of escape. The Lord had just given them freedom from the captivity of the Egyptians and was leading them to the promised land, the place that they would be able to walk out the freedom that they had received. They trusted that God was able to provide their freedom. Amen. They walked out of Egypt. They didn't just barely escape. They walked out. They walked out with the riches. Amen. Lord, that they were walking with the promises that God had given unto them. But then they came to the Red Sea. And it seemed as though the promise had come to an end. That the end came prematurely. Their question was no longer was he able, because they knew he was able. They just saw him put the, uh, the plagues on the Egyptians. He, yeah. They saw him protect them when they were being plagued. They saw what God was able to do. So the question wasn't, was he able, but would he? Would he save them? Would he get them out of this place? We need to strengthen our faith to will he? Amen. Will he save us? When the children of Israel saw that the Egyptians were in hot pursuit of them, they were afraid and they cried out to the Lord. And then they complained to Moses. Amen. They complained to Moses for bringing them out. They said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to die? So their faith in God's willingness was shaken. But their manifestation of their doubt was to lash out at Moses, the one that they could see with their physical eyes, the one that God used to lead them out, the one that they could see physically, they placed the blame on. Sometimes that's true for us today, amen. We call it the blame game. I was somewhat surprised when I was doing my study that I actually found the definition of the blame game in Webster's Dictionary. There's actually a definition for the blame game in Webster's Dictionary. And it says, a situation in which different individuals or groups attempt to assign blame to each other for some problem or failure. It is so much easier to blame others for the troubles and the trials that we're going through instead of looking inward I received, or I heard it recently, a teaching on the tabernacle, and we're going to learn all about that in Insta, you guys. Amen. We're going to learn all about this. But I learned um, from a teaching, and I was able to um, confirm this with the Word of God, that um, the bronze laver that was used for washing was made of mirrors. And that allowed the self-reflection to take place during the washing. And I want to look at that just to show you in Exodus 30. And we're going to look at 17 through 20. And it reads, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, You shall also make a laver of bronze with its base of bronze for washing. You shall put it between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it. For Aaron and his sons to wash their hands and wash their feet, amen, in the water from it. When they go into the tabernacle of meeting or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn an offering made of fire to the Lord, they shall wash with the water lest they die. And later in Exodus in 38 and 8, this is where it tells us that it was made of mirrors. So 38 and 8 says, he made the laver of bronze and its base of bronze from the bronze mirrors of the serving women who were assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. The laver was placed in the tabernacle for cleansing, and by making it with mirrors, it allowed self-reflection. Amen? Amen. There is a point that we need to get to to take responsibility for our actions or the lack of thereof. There have been outside circumstances, yes, that have shaped us, amen. There have been, been things that happened to us or maybe even around us that have started or shaped where we are starting, 
Amen. But that's the key. This is our starting place. We are not to stay here. Amen. There may even be still things that are shaping what's going on around us. But we have to get to that point where we say, I'm moving forward with God in Jesus' name. I am not going to allow the things that are around me to stop, block, or hinder me from moving what God has for me to do. Amen. Amen. We have to reach that point that we take responsibility for what we do, for what we say, to get to that point of moving forward. And as I hear apostles say, in faith, by faith, and with faith, in Jesus' name, we are going to go forward with God, moving forward in what God has for us. So I just urge you to beware of the blame game. And believe me, I had to look at myself as well as the Lord gave this to me. For the children of Israel, it popped up every time they encountered some resistance. So listen to this. Every time they encountered resistance in where they were going, when they got uncomfortable or entered into a trial, once things did not turn out the way that they thought they should or they didn't understand what God was doing, that's when they played the blame game and they lashed out at Moses. Moses was the representative of God. He was the one leading them. He was the one helping them, working with God to assist them to get to where they were going, amen, towards the promised land. He was in tune with God. He communed with God for them. Have you ever heard the phrase, don't shoot the messenger? (laughs) Poor Moses. Like, they were ready to stone him, like, every turn, it seemed like. Moses was faithful to God, and he was just doing what God had called him to do. He was faithful, and he was leading, amen? Now, he failed a couple of times, right? Yeah. At the very end, he was supposed to speak to the rock. And I taught on this a couple weeks ago. He, I didn't realize this. He had to, um, there, God gave water from the rock twice, yeah. The first time he was supposed to strike the rock, which he did, and the water came out. The second time he was supposed to speak to the rock, but he struck that thing twice after he yelled at them, (laughs) and the water came out. And that's why he wasn't able to go over into the promised land. Amen? So he wasn't perfect. Amen? So those that we see, those that are serving God, we're not all perfect. All the leaders, we're not perfect. Amen? Amen? Amen. But they lashed out at Moses. All he was doing was trying to lead them in what, he, what God was calling him to do in Jesus' name. Now, let's go back and look at the Red Sea account again. Notice how God didn't open up the Red Sea right away. He knew that he had a plan of escape for them. He knew what he was doing. He was the one that actually led them that particular way. He knew that the Red Sea was going to be right in front of them. And he knew what was coming up behind them. He actually hardened Pharaoh's heart to actually chase after them. So he put them in that position, amen. He could have opened up the Red Sea before they got there. He could have rolled out the red carpet. He could have made it so when they came up to it, they could just go right through it with no problems. But God did that for the testing of their faith. Amen. Amen. He wanted to see... What are they going to do? And there's benefits for the testing of our faith. I'm going to look at a few of these. Um, First of all, 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Now he tells us, or Paul tells us here, that we are going to be persecuted. So for those of you that may not know, when we follow Jesus Christ, it's a known. We're going to be persecuted. Amen? 2 Timothy 3 and 2 tells us, yes, all who desire to live godly in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. And Holy Spirit just said, as I was reading that, but take heart, Jesus has overcome the world. Amen? Amen. 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7 tells us that it's good for our faith to be tested so that we can have it tested now so that way when Jesus comes, we can be to the praise and the honor of glory when he comes. It says, in this greatly rejoice, for now for a little while, if need be, You have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. James uh, 1, 2, and 4 reminds us that testing produces patience. 
And that one reads, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Hallelujah. Lacking nothing. And James um, also goes on to say in verse 12 that we have a crown. Amen says, blessed is the man who endures temptation, for he has been approved. Amen. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. Amen. So there is rewards for the testing of our faith. God allowed the children of Israel to see the Egyptians coming behind them and the Red Sea before them. They knew that they were in the middle, right? And what were they going to do? God was waiting. What are they going to do? And I could hear apostles saying, what are you going to believe? Either God will or he won't. What's it going to be? I don't know. She says that to me. I don't know if she says that to you. What's it going to be? Either he will or he won't. She doesn't say either he can or he can't because we know that he is able. Amen. But we need to raise our faith to that place that we know that he will that he will bring us through in the name of Jesus. Whatever we're facing, that he will bring us through it. Amen. So what do you believe? What's it going to be? Now we know, again, that he is able. So I ask, will he come through for you? For what you are facing right now, will he come through for you? Amen. Amen. Does he have a plan to prosper you? A good plan and not for evil. To bring you to an expected end. Amen. Amen. He will. He will bring us through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our faith is strengthened as we see the works of the Lord come through. Our faith is also strengthened when we hear, right, other people's testimonies. When we hear the testimonies from others, Romans 10 and 17 tells us, so faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But how do we stay focused, full of faith, faithful, when we don't see the winds, when God is quiet, when it seems that what's before us is way too big for us? Amen? Amen. 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 Let's go back and look at our scripture reading for today. I'm going to start just a couple of verses earlier just to look to see what the children of Israel's response was when he saw um, the the Egyptians behind them and the Red Sea before them. So we're going to look at that, and then we'll read uh, Moses' response as well as the Lord's response. So Exodus 14, 10 through 12, it reads, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, so they were very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is it not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been for us to serve the Egyptians that we should die in the wilderness. So let's look at our scripture for today of Moses' and then the Lord's response. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more forever. The Lord will fight for you. You shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. And I want to look at this verse and break it down. I looked at the Blue Letter Bible and some of those key phrases. So do not be afraid. Stand still. Stand still is H3320, which is pronounced yasab. It means to place, set, stand, set or station oneself, to present oneself. And the next one is to see, which is H7200, pronounced ra'a. There are several here, but I want you to really listen to these. This is to see. To see, look at, inspect perceive, consider, to see, have a vision, to regard, look after, see after, learn about, observe, watch, look upon, to look out, find out, to give attention to, discern or distinguish. So see is not something that we just sit there and see, amen. There is an action that we're doing as we see. 
the salvation is H3444, which is Yeshua. Yeshua, which is just one letter away from Yeshua. Amen. Hallelujah. Salvation is deliverance, welfare, victory, and prosperity. And what she will accomplish for you today, which is H3117, Yom, which is day, time, year, or time period. Amen. So as we face our spiritual Red Sea, as we feel like we've come to the end, we feel like defeat is imminent, and we feel like hopelessness is abounding, we can look and remember the encouraging word from Moses and the, ex and the additional explanation of the words. And I'm going to read this with those words. Do not be afraid. Stand still. Settle yourselves. Settle yourselves in faith and see, perceive, have a vision of, to observe, to look for, to discern the salvation of the Lord, the deliverance, the victory, the prosperity, yes. which he will accomplish for you today, a period of time. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord says to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Yes. Amen. God, God told them to go forward. Don't stop. Don't give in. This is not the time to camp out here. Amen. This is the time to move forward. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't give in. In Jesus' name. He will provide. Amen. He is faithful to provide. Won't he do it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's go back. I do want to go back and read the uh, last uh, two verses of chapter 14. And this is after he saved them. And it reads, Exodus 14, uh, 30 through 31. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Amen. 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 They believe the Lord and Moses. So Moses in, is in good right now, right? Yeah. They believe Moses right now. So I want us to continue to look at some of the lessons that the children of Israel went through that we can learn from. And one of the trends that we hear is the murmuring and complaining, right? Yeah. That's what we always hear come through. Again, ready to stone Moses, the servant of God, at every turn, it seemed like. When things didn't go their way or things um, got too hard, their go-to was to complain to Moses for bringing them out, bringing them out of captivity, bringing them out of the place that they were comfortable. Mm -hmm. Even though they were oppressed, they saw it as comfortable. Amen? Isn't it funny when we reflect back on the good old days? We only remember the good things. When we tend to forget the challenges and the things that we experienced, we get that touch of nostalgia. And nostalgia is defined as a sentimental longing or wistful affection for the past, typically for a period or place with a happy personal associations. We remember the good and we forget the bad, right? Yeah. Yeah. Familiar music, smells, and other reminders of past activate those nostalgic feelings. Have you ever been on a fast and you get that picture of food in your mind? <laughs> Amen. And you can almost even smell it. Amen. So that's why we fast and pray, right? Amen. Amen. So the children of Israel were on a spiritual journey, but I don't think they were aware that that's what was going on. They were on a spiritual journey, and they needed to fast and pray. They were on a journey to get the uh, Egypt, the oppression, out of them, moving forward to what God has for them. And the first thing that they remembered when they went to the nostalgia was their food. They remembered the food that they had in Egypt. Amen? Amen. So we pushed through, but the children of Israel seemed that they had been consumed with nostalgia. The excitement of the rejoicing of the crossing of the Red Sea had subsided, and the reality of wilderness life set in. Let's look at that account of the food in Exodus 16, 1 through 3. And it reads, And they journeyed from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month, after they departed from the land of Egypt. 
the whole assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said, Oh, that we had died in the hands of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, and we ate bread to the full, for you have brought us here in the wilderness to kill us, the whole assembly, with hunger. That's all they could think about was their food. They yearned for the bread and the pots of meat in Egypt, so God gave them manna. But their cravings grew even stronger and more specific. They were saying, what about the fish and the cucumbers and the onions and the garlic? Amen? What is this, what is this manna? So God gave them quail. But this opened up even more cravings. So when you're fasting, I can't do a partial fast because if I just open up that door just a little bit, it just adds on that I want more and more and more. we got to do that full fast. But that's what happened. God kept giving them stuff, and they just wanted more and more and more. They had that spiritual awakening. They were in the middle of a spiritual awakening. Again, I don't think they realized obviously what was going on it was a spiritual journey from the promise of the freedom to the actual fulfillment of the promise in the promised land but they longed for the stable the predictable schedule that they had known for 400 years i'm sure you've heard the declaration if you want something different you have to do something different amen The children of Israel did not have a revelation of this. They were not able to see, to perceive what it is, to discern what it was that God was doing for them. They did not understand the fullness of the promise. It wasn't just to get them out of Egypt, amen? He wanted to get them through to the promised land that they could walk in the fullness of everything that he had for them. But they had a yearning for the past comfort, the past schedule events. And this is something we need a revelation of as well, amen? Amen. We need to get a revelation for where God is taking us. We have to change. We can't stay with our old schedule, our old comforts, the old way of doing things, the old way of thinking. We need to move forward and get that revelation that God desires us. I know apostles been heralding for some time. We can't be so busy that we can't hear from God, that we can't be available for God. So clearing our schedules and asking the Lord before we take on something new, is this something that you would have me to do? Is it a good thing or is it from you, God? Amen. Even some of the things may be church things, but they may not be what God is calling you to do at this time. We had this conversation in Instay on Thursday, amen. So even talking about the strategy, so we identified it was difficult to make God a priority, but then we went a step further of strategies for this week. So we put strategies in place to make sure that God was a priority for us, amen? Amen. Amen. So we need to make room for God and not to be so consumed by what's comfortable what we're used to, amen. We need to get out of our comfort zone in Jesus' name, amen. And then then Moses went up to Mount Sinai. I bet he was a little happy to get a little peace from the people of Israel. Um, But this created another opportunity for the children of Israel to get a taste of their former life, the feasting, the celebration, the religious customs. And this is where they built the golden calf. They desired something to worship. Let's look at that in Exodus 32 and 1. It reads, And now when the people saw that Moses delayed from coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come make us gods, little g, that we shall that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, we don't the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what's become of him. So the children of Israel missed the familiar, the routine, the good aspects of the life that they thought were good that they had built in Egypt. Their old world was gone, and their new world in the wilderness was a time of uncertainty. But the nostalgia so consumed them that they overlooked the 400 years of bondage. Now, we are going to face uncertainty in our lives, amen? We do face uncertainty in our lives, We don't know all that the future is going to hold for us, but we know the one that does, right? If we put our trust and our faith fully in God, we know that he has a good plan for us to prosper us, to bring us to an expected end. But the caveat there is, is it him that we're following? Amen. 
As long as we are following him, that's when he's going to bring us to an expected end. So as long as we're following him, we don't have to fear. I bind all fear of the future right now in Jesus' name. Nostalgia is going to try to pull us back to our past, pull us back to what seemed to be good, even though we forgot the bad during that time. We tend not to remember that. The things that the uh, voice, the vice of nostalgia will try to pull us back and it robs us from the blessings of right now, as well as it takes us away from the challenges that we face so that we're able to raise our faith so that we're able to walk with God and walk in the fullness that he has for us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right, so in closing, I just want to do a quick review. So the scripture I'm reading on today, who can tell me? So Moses gave the word of encouragement. What did God say? He said, go forward. Amen. Amen. The land may not be comfortable. It may not be familiar, but it's not time to stop. It's not time to set up camp here. It's not time to give up or give in. It's time to go forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please stand in closing. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I had a bunch of stuff. I'm just going to go right there. Okay. (laughs) I always have my dissertation at the end, so we're going to skip that today. But um, so the altar is open, definitely. If the if this has been if the Lord has been speaking to you through this, um, especially in, in thinking about the blame game, thinking about that introspection, um, thinking about moving forward, is there something that you're facing that um, you need to touch and agree with somebody to help raise your faith? Will God do it? Will God pull you through this? Amen. We are happy to uh, pray with and for you. For those online, if you have any prayer requests, please send them in, and we will definitely pray with you and for you. We can call out to you. Amen. Amen. And if you have not given your life to Christ and you desire to have that relationship with God, if you desire for him to lead you so that you know that you know that you know, that you're going in the direction that you need to, and he is going to fight for you. So if you would like to rededicate or give your life to Christ, please um, pray this short prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe God raised you from the dead. And you are seated at the right hand of God the Father. And I believe that you're coming again. Jesus, I invite you in my heart. Wash me with your blood. Have mercy on me. I repent of my sins. And I ask that you would forgive me. Make me the brand new person that you created me to be. Thank you, Father, and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you prayed this prayer, you now belong to the body of Christ. Amen. Holy Spirit has come to take residency inside you. And I encourage you to get into a church that is a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church. Amen. Amen. And even just praying to God, talking with him, he desires that communication with you. He desires that relationship with you. Amen. If you don't know where to start, that's a great place to start. Just talk to him. Amen. And get in his word. And if you don't have a church home, we do offer you uh, New Beginnings Discipleship Ministries. We are a kingdom training center. We do believe in discipleship, discipling, um, being discipled first and discipling others.